welcome to Wednesday, Wednesday evening service. Hallelujah. We've been so blessed. We have been so blessed with Pastor uh, Kamala and her husband Jody. Yes. Thank you guys. We appreciate you very much. Very much. And um, God has been so good. We've been so blessed. Amen. God is good. So give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. We serve an awesome God, a mighty God, and we're just so grateful. I'm just going to read a little bit of Psalm 101, 103. It's a few verses. It's just so amazing. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With, with my whole heart, I will praise His holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good thing He does for us in our life. Amen. He forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. He redeems me from death. He redeems me from the darkness and calls me, calls you with, he calls you and me with love and tender mercies. Amen. Isn't Amen. he worthy? Isn't he worthy to be praised? Amen. Amen. So he fills my life with good things. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. My young is renewed like eagles. Isn't he good? The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. Hallelujah. And he said, oh, God is just so good. And we just keep going on. I, I love reading Tom. It just bring, it's just so much life in them. Like, you know, like David. He just, he's so good. God is so good. Then Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies and you every morning, Father God. Lord, we're just so grateful for the blood of Jesus, Father God. We just thank you. We praise you, Father God. We worship you. Holy Spirit, Lord, we reverend your presence here, Father God. We reverend your anointed here that it breaks every yoke and this burdens in our life, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, and we rejoice. We rejoice in you, Father God, in the freedom that you have given us, Father God. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. There is freedom Amen. in this house. Amen. There is freedom in our heart. There is freedom in our family. Hallelujah. There is freedom in this city. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Father God. Lord, we just ask you, Holy Ghost, to have your way tonight, Father God. We open our hearts to you, Father God, to receive, Father God. And we just receive, receive from you, Father God. We just thank you. We bless you. We worship you, Father God. You are good. For the Lord is good. His love and mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good. For his love and mercy endures forever. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me. Make it personal, God. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah, Father God. We just ruin our life to you, Father God. We give you praise. We give you praise, Father God. We remember your goodness. We remember your faithfulness, Father God. And that's why we worship. We worship you, Father God. And we trust in you, Father God. Have your way tonight, Father God. In Jesus' name. I just want to remind you tonight we're going to worship the Lord. And um, we're just going to worship the songs that Miss Kim has wrote herself. And uh, Pastor Gary, too, I think. That, never mind. <laughs> so, yeah. so let's enjoy. God is good. Amen. Let's just go around and beat one another. We're together again. That's okay. Let's praise the Lord. We're together again.
Something good is in store, we're together again. understand much beyond that and uh, pastor he stretches everybody he stretched me and there would be times when he would be preaching he would say a line he goes there's a song there I thought okay cool I didn't realize he was a, he was thinking there's a song there and I was gonna be singing it before the service was over. so a lot of those songs just came out of one line but if, if you understand the first time they ever had me do that it was on the scriptures the first song I'm gonna do was, was actually based on scripture and that was the first one that we did. But then there was another time. But as time went by, which kind of, I guess, is a testimony to how if we would be submitted to a leader that can instruct us, there's no telling where you can go in the spirit. Because I, I freaked out. I've been here for seven years. I freaked out for the first five and a half. About five and a half, something clicked in. And I began to I say, well, maybe I can know what the spirit's saying, too. Maybe it's... Maybe I don't have to always wait every second for my pastor to relay what the Holy Ghost wants to tell me. Maybe I can learn, right? right. So there came times when pastor would be talking. I'd say, there's a song there. And I would start to write down lines while I was sitting there. Yes. And, and then he would say, Miss Kim, do you have anything? Well, I had a song. It was a song, right? So it was that progression of understanding the spirit. But I just want to give, I want to give credit and tribute to pastor because, um, you know, this, this is because of the teaching and the mentoring that I've had and the example that I've had. So um, they're all easy, and, and uh, the words are going to be up there, and please just uh, just come along with us. Now, the, I think the last song I'm going to do is not what I wrote, but it just kind of seemed to fit with everything. And of course, we want to have uh, Tamala, I think I said that right for the first time, Tamala. We want to have Tamala, you know, come up as well in worship. So, okay, let's go, guys.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is not a concert. The songs are easy. Please join in. Yes. Just dance in 
just want to read a portion in Joel. And it says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servant and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. And we're seeing that now. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. We've seen many blood moons already before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. What a promise we have. What a promise. I was... Uh, I was reminded when we were singing about the rain there in, uh, in the earlier days of the 1900s when the revivals broke out. And uh, there are stories that they tell about people just walking on the street and just going to work and all of a sudden just falling on their faces and crying out to God and getting saved. And then talk about men in the, in the taverns and drinking and they would just fall on their faces and turn to God and repent and and there wasn't really anybody preaching to them, but the Spirit of God just fell. Yes. And so I was saying, Lord, that's what we're saying tonight. Lord, yes. you do it. You do it, Lord. We're, we're here. We're doing, we're calling it in. We're doing what we can. But, Lord, you do it. Yes. Unless the Lord, like we said last night, unless the Lord builds the house, you labor in vain. Right. But we're just praying for the Lord to move and for his Spirit to move. So that men and women's hearts will be, they'll be just smote with the. You know when you got born again and your heart was smote because you just uh, you knew there was something there. You knew there was a God. You knew there was another way to live. And so that's what we're praying for, that God, that the Spirit of God will just be poured out upon our cities and upon our country, upon our nations. You know, we pray a lot for our families, but uh, he was asking and saying uh, to him, I think it was Ezekiel, he said, what do you see? He said, I see a valley of dry bones. And you know, if the Lord were to ask us tonight, what do you see? That's what we could say, Lord. We see cities of dry bones. People that don't know you. People that are just living their life, running like ants to and fro, but they don't know you, Jesus. And he said, can those dry bones live? And he said, Lord, you know, but we know they can. Amen. So we ask the Lord to breathe on dry bones tonight and that, that the Spirit of God would just come into people's hearts and homes and lives and strike them wherever they are, that they know there is a God and that they'll do what the last verse I read was, that they'll call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Amen.
you believe that God's going to move and that uh, people are going to be touched, that God's, God's plan for this service will, will happen? Yes. God's got a plan. You know what? God's got a plan. I say, what is it? I don't know. When you get this flow, we'll get jump in and, and uh, we'll get to be where we're supposed to be. But, you know, it helps if you all cooperate. Like, how do we cooperate? Just join in. Get behind Push. Well, we, we talk about, you know, when Brother, Brother Dale comes, we were talking about him, draw on the Spirit. Draw on the anointing that that he carries. And so uh, it's important to pull on the anointing that uh, uh, Sister Tamala and Brother Jody, they carry with them. And uh, there's things that can happen to you, through you, for you. And uh, I believe you're just, you'll never be the same. Uh, I just want to just real quick obey the Holy Spirit. Uh, Kathy Mal, can you come up here? Just for a minute. And I want to have Sister Tamla, I want you to come. And uh, I want you to put your, I want her to put her hands on your hips. Okay, I, I just saw that when we were singing. I don't know if that means anything to you. Okay. Just just pray for her. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shitabara Bushikara Dana Mashikara Dara Bata Karada Shabra Bhakta Brava Shakara Rabada Shananana Mashakara Radara Bata Rada Bata Broshitara de Dabati Data Bashikara Bara Bata Rab Zita Bara Bushakura Bura Buddha de Dara Bushibari de Dabati Da Sita Bahehehe Sita Bahehehe Thank you, Lord. Barona Musha, Bora Barada, Shanana Namasa Karada. Thank you, Lord. 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 Glory to God. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you thanks again. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, something's going on. Thank you, Lord.
Sounds good to me. An increase. Mm -hmm. I want an increase. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many will stand with me tonight and say, Lord, I want an increase in on the anointing? Yeah. 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 Lord, I ask right now while we're standing, Lord, I thank you for your increase. Lord, I thank you for your increase. Every person in the building that asks, you said, oh, Father, we all, have, all we have to do is ask in your name and it shall be done. Father, I ask for an increase in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, I ask for an increase in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I ask for an increase in the Holy Ghost. Increase in the anointing. Increase in the anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, receive. Receive all over the building tonight. We receive your anointing, Lord. Receive the anointing. You know, in the Bible, in the scripture, when Samuel went to anoint Jesse's house, right? Typically back then, you anointed the firstborn. That was a big deal back then. You didn't overlook the firstborn. Right? Right. Mm. Oh. And he said, Jesse, because he went all he went from the first to the second on down the line. And Samuel said, Jesse, do you have any more sons? And Jesse said, I have one. He's out tending sheep. He said, Bring him here. And uh And when David came in. Said that's him. Yeah. Anoint him. Oh. And Samuel went. And he anointed David. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And I hear the Spirit saying, you know, like it, it don't have to be a certain way. No. Like it don't have to be, you don't have to be perfect. No. That's not what God's looking for. He's looking for obedience. That's right? right? I knew that was coming somewhere. He's not looking for perfect. He's looking for obedience. And so when I stand up here tonight, I'm not perfect by no means. And sometimes I ask God, why? Like, why? What? what? You know? But I need the anointing. And I feel like he has not passed me by. Right? That's right. But I would not. When I walked into the room, when you walked into the room, he said, you're anointed. And you're anointed. And you're anointed. And it is the anointing of God that breaks the yoke. Sets captives free. Amen. That's why we need an increase. That's why we need an increase. Amen. That's why we need an increase. So we can impact people's lives. Amen. Amen. Increase of the anointing. And you know what? Sweet look, you can be seated. Can they be seated? I'm probably tired of standing. You know, little sweet David, you know what he did? He didn't say, move over. I'm going to be king. I'm going to do my thing. No. What did he do? He went back to tending sheep. I'm going to miss being here because I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, I feel the anointing of God, and I'm just. Uh, he went back to tending sheep. And that just simply says to me do what you're called to do, even if it's small. 
It doesn't matter. Do what God's called you to do. And in the obedience of it, in the obedience of it, brings the anointing of it. Amen. And the more anointed you are, amen, the more you hear the Spirit, flow in the Spirit, the anointing comes. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just crave the anointing of God. I do. I really do. I really do. Hallelujah. And I just want to say thank you tonight for allowing us to come. And I know we've said it several times through this, this revival this week that we thought we was coming to bless you. And my life has been changed. The deposit that has been deposited on the inside of me, I don't even know what God is going to do, but I know God's going to do something. You said he went back to the, to the sheep. He went back with the anointing. Mm -hmm. yes. The anointing didn't just stay wherever he was anointed. It went wherever he went. It went with him. <laughs> Are you ready? Or? <laughs> Because you're, oh, I think that'd look great. Because no. it, it won't work. It won't do anything. Nothing. 
You watch, their, their lives are going to be just changed. They'll be changed. Now you're sitting in a place where the anointing is flowing. And you can, you can allow some of that to come into you just because you're here. All you have to do is receive. You say, well, no, nobody laid hands on me. Well, the Holy Ghost is here. Let Him do it. Just receive. It's in the air. It's in the atmosphere. There's anointing. There's freedom. There's blessings. It's the burden removing yoke destroying anointing that anointing can be increased increased if Elijah could have a double portion of what Elijah had then you can have you can have a double portion you can have a triple portion a quadruple portion Jesus said the works that I do so you do also well that's going to take some anointing isn't it Right. and then he said be even greater works start with the works of Jesus. Yes. I'm not concerned about the greater works. Just do the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Huh? Have you got something to share?
Oh, you'll never be, you'll never be, you'll never be, you'll never be the same again. Cause everything looks different and everything looks brighter and the revelation is higher. It'll be easy, it'll be easy to walk in it, easy to flow in it, but it'll never be the same again, oh, cause you're not going back to yesterday. From this moment on, there's a whole new way. Oh, as the anointing changes, guides, and leads. It changes, guides, and leads new lives. And when you walk into the room, when you walk into the room, oh, it'll all be different. It'll all be different. Nothing will ever be the same again.
but you can still pray for them from, from a little distance. Just Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we, we don't know exactly what you're doing, but we know it's good, and we know it's God. And Lord, I, I just thank you, Lord. And I know uh, Sister Tamla, she said last night, because I said, well, we'll pray for you tomorrow. She says, is what I'm experiencing only for here? Is it only in this church? I said, oh, no. This is, see, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. It's going to go wherever you go. And when she goes with her husband, her husband is going to have to make room for her. Make room for her. I see services where he gets up to speak and, and the Spirit of God comes on her and he just has to go sit back down. Because it ain't going to happen. And he'll be, and he'll be, he'll be happy with that. Because he, he wants God more than, than, than anything. Just like she wants God more than anything. They came a long way. Didn't know why they came. I say, God, had a, God has a reason. There's a reason that you're here tonight. You know, there's a reason other people didn't come. I found that God will only do some things with select crowds. Sometimes He won't do something with some some people that are just you know critic have critical spirits. If they're just uh, there for the thrill, See, there is a thrill in serving God. There's a thrill in the services, but we're not here for the thrill. We're here just to be obedient. Hallelujah. We got more yet? Shake it, it, it. 
they say, oh, it's no longer what dad did, but it's what you do, it's what you do, oh, cause it's flowing through from generation to generation, and I shake it and I shake it and I know, oh, and I know, 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 and I know,
that I'll never be the same. And that's okay. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. You are now. What? You are now. I am now. <laughs> but I assure you, in the future, you may have to remind me. Because what the enemy wants to do is come and say, you're not ready. You're not good enough. It's not going to happen. But I'll just take him back to May 8th, 2024. When God forever changed my heart and life. On this minute, on this different ministry path. Yeah. I've loved him since I was six years old. how reserved we are. <laughs> you just have no idea how reserved we are. And for God just to come and just mess us up like this. I know y'all are laughing, but y'all have no idea. <laughs> we are messed up, and that's okay. takes you back to certain places, certain times. And I remember being in Scottsburg, Indiana when I was a little girl, probably 12 years old, and a new song had come out and it was, let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Let situation that has something my life but I remember that just came out and I had my little cassette tape and it was a new song and my dad wouldn't let me do a new song until I had practiced and practiced and practiced because he said you need to get into your spirit before you go and minister but this stuff was said to me at 10 and 12 years old you know Thank you, Daddy, if you want to. But that particular note, I love this song so much. And I said, I can do it. I hadn't practiced that much, but I said, I can do it. I know. I feel the anointing. I was 10 or 12. And we were, it was a, it was a big tent that was set up at the fairgrounds in Scottsburg, Indiana. And I'll never, I'll never forget it because it was a strategic point in my life because... I went into that little bathroom at the fairgrounds and I practiced. And then I went out and sang it that night and the power of God fell so strong. And that's where I remember hearing the Holy Ghost my, being led by my spirit for the first time. Because I knew I was supposed to sing that song. I knew, I knew I had to convince Daddy. Because they're like, no, you hadn't practiced enough, you know. I'm like, I know I'm supposed to sing it. And I just remember the anointing falling that night. That's a young age. And I feel that again tonight, like something has happened on the inside of me. And I will be forever thankful to all of y'all. Amen? To all of y'all. So for wherever I go from here, you'll have a part in it. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. Your seed sown yes. into my life. Yes. And you will have forever a part in it. I love how God works because you can go and look at my little hot pink notebook 
and the first line in it says tonight, favor ain't fair. That's what I was going to talk about. Favor ain't fair. Because God picks and does exactly what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. No matter how reserved you are and how put together, God will mess you up and it's okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? He will mess you up and it's okay. Because I'll never forget May 8th, 2024, when God messed me up. For the good. Amen. Bo, you need help up? Are you good? Can we help you? <laughs> Look, I'm serious. I was laying down there for a while, and I'm like, I, I feel like a thousand pounds. Like, I can't not get up. And he just kept singing over us. Like, I heard everything you said. Like, just kept singing over us. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Poor Joe. <laughs> when you love God so much that he moves in your life. It's very humbling. Amen. It's going to be an open book if that's all right. Yes. I knew the Lord had called me to Port Harvest Bible College in Columbus, Ohio, 1994. I went there. I filled with the Holy Ghost. Never have been before. The favor of the Lord was on me to travel with Pastor Parsley. I got to hear it all. Dr. Sumrall, Shambaugh, or Roberts, all the great men of God. But after Bible college, I met, I met her at Bible college. But after Bible college, I really felt like I was supposed to go to Rama. I wound up not going to Rama. But I did the correspondence course. But I never had Brother Hagin lay hands on me. And then I wound up with a pastor, Pastor Callan who did have Brother Hagin lay hands on him, first graduating class. That was in 94, graduated in 96, left there in 98, and then our pastor's been a part of our lives 17 years. And then they come here, it puts me right back, almost Bible college again, because the same anointing Smith Wigglesworth, to Dr. Summerall, to Brother Hagen, to Shambaugh, to all the men of God that's laid hands on your pastor to come in to our life. You know, and God has a way of, you know, he doesn't hold anything against you. <laughs> a 
Because I repented. Because I didn't go to Grandma. But the Lord was trying to get me filled with the Holy Ghost in uh, Ohio. And then trying to get me to teach the taught word of God from Rain. And so I finally got it. Amen. And it's amazing. It's just amazing how God orchestrates this. I marry into a family raised on Brother Hagin's ministry. So I have it. It's a part of our life. Part of our ministry. And God turns what the devil meant for evil for our good. Amen. And I've been, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, some of these things, I don't know. I, 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 the more I study to find, I find out the less I know. <laughs> the more I pray, I find out the less I know. Thank you, Lord. And I've been studying Brother Hagin. I, I don't I, I don't know when it started several weeks ago, but about seeing and knowing. Seeing and knowing. Seeing and knowing. And there's some things that's happened this week right over there that I saw it before I done it. And Pastor, I was in my hotel room today and I was like, okay, I... I I don't understand this, but I saw your pastor laughing. <laughs> and the only scripture that came up to me, and I even did a sermon on it, because I thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to preach this tonight, but the verse that came up to me, and I even looked it up, researched it, was joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah. Wow. And when he laid hands on us, I heard the laugh. And I saw him laughing. Yeah. But I didn't know he was laying hands on us. I just saw him laughing and I heard him laughing. And when he laid hands on us, he was laughing. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what the Holy Ghost to do is give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Man, you can't get a sad Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I know I'm crying, but this ain't tears of sadness, honey. This is tears of joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> and I just started laughing right there in my hotel room. I did. I just started laughing. Before Tamla got back, I was studying this morning. I didn't tell you at lunch. And then before Tamla got back this afternoon, I'd say that scripture and I'd start laughing in the hotel room. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I heard your pastor laughing. And so I thought I was supposed to pray for him. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. But the opposite was true. He was supposed to pray for me and give me joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I've never seen him pray for nobody. It's my first time meeting the guy. Amen. <laughs> I never heard him preach. I never saw him lay hands on nobody. Yes. I love it. Amen. He's ha ha ha. But he laid hands on us. Amen. I heard the laugh. I'm telling you, I heard it in my hotel room. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. <laughs> glory. <laughs> So I don't know if the Lord is trying to teach me the spirit of seeing and knowing. I want to see it before it happens so I can make sure I do it right. Amen. amen. I said amen. Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Can I give you this illustration? Can I show you something tonight? Is that all right? Yeah. Yes. I don't know how long I got. I don't even know what time it is. All right. Take your time. Yeah. Just help me. Well, I'm going to have to pull the table over here so they can see it. If that's okay.
this is this is what the Lord had showed me even about a week I don't know a week or two ago thank you the Lord showed me this and if you would just turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. Just give you this because I, I, you know, my prayer today was, God, what can I give them that you want to give them? But I want to give them something that'll take them farther, deeper, higher, increase more than ever before. Amen. And my wife started talking about the double portion of anointing, and she had no idea what I was going to preach. I, I kept asking her, what are you preaching tonight? I don't know, Joe. So she calls me Joe. I said, what are you preaching tonight? I don't know, Joe. I'm just going, I'm just, I'm just going to say a few words. Well, she didn't say a few. Well, she did say a few words, but it didn't last long. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so she started talking about the anointing, because I was like, God, I, I, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to give them tonight. She told me before we left, I'm going to speak on faith. I was like, all right, God, I'll follow her lead. I'll speak on favor to you. Then she gets up, don't say nothing about favor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's why you got to be ready in season and out of season. Amen. But I already had this sermon. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I come in here. Y'all think it's funny, but I come in here with three sermons every single service this week. Amen. No lie. No lie. I come in here with three sermons. And I sat right over there. I've been praying in the Holy Ghost all week long. Asking the Holy Ghost to speak. Asking the Holy Ghost to move. Asking the Holy Ghost to give me revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. And I ask him, what does he want for you? You guys. For this church. For this pastor. For this first lady. So I come here with three sermons. Amen. I, I have. And so I just like, I'm going to go whatever the Holy Ghost tells me to go with. And that's what I did all three times. Some of the sermons I've never even preached. <laughs> but I got them in my notebook now, so I probably will somewhere. I don't know. Amen. I said amen. amen. Well, let me give you this real quick. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh or of human nature without God. Verse 17. For the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh. Godless human nature. For these are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding in conflict with each other so that you are not free, but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. He said, but if you are guided or led by the Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the doings, practices of the flesh are clear, they're obvious. They're immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, Enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill temper, selfishness, divisions, dissensions, party spirit, factions, sex with peculiar opinions, heresies, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not in inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, which is gladness, peace, patience, and even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, continuance, Against such things there is no law that can bring a charge. And those who belong to Christ, Jesus the Messiah, have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature with his passions and appetites and desires. 
And he said, if we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line, our conduct controlled by the Spirit. And then he said, let us not become vainglorious and self-conceited, competitive and challenging, provoking, irritating to one another, envying and being jealous of one another. And he talks about being controlled by the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, but then he goes on to say, be ye filled with the Spirit. He talks about being filled with the Spirit. And you all know, because you've been taught, be ye being filled. Be ye continually filled. And continually is always a present tense word. So when you get saved, you get God the Father, God the, uh, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Yes, but there's a different baptism of the Holy Ghost like happened in Acts 1.8 he said tarry until you be endued with power from on high and when they were endued with power from on high what began to happen they began to speak in other tongues everybody with me and so I want to challenge you to stay full of the Holy Ghost I said, stay full of the Holy Ghost. Why do we need to be refilled? There's one baptism, but there's many refillings. Everybody with me today, amen? Why is there many refillings or there has to be a refilling? Well, same way why your car has to be refilled with gas. It runs out. Praise the Lord. Maybe not run out till you fill it up, but you fill it up when it's close to running out. Right? Yeah. Why? Because the world pulls on us. Yes. People pull on us. Yes. The jobs pull on us. Our family pull on us. Right. And so everything that pulls on us yes. pulls or drains us. It, it, it can pull the spirit out of us. Yes. Because here's what I know. If a person is irritated or agitated or angry or upset, they're low on the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a spiritual gauge in you just like there's a physical gauge on the car. Right. Everybody with me? Yes. It's nothing like having a full tank of gas, brand new tires, and an oil change. <laughs> and when that happens, guess what? I'm ready to drive 3,000 miles. I can't make it on a tank of gas, but I'm ready to go wherever I, I, I feel like going. You know why? Because you just feel brand new, don't you? You feel good. You got it washed. You got it cleaned up. The tires are all. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. It's just something good about having a car fresh, uh, uh, you know, car wash and fresh oil and, and full, filled up with gas and cleaned up and just polished. You're ready to go show it off. Amen. Well, there's something about being full of the Holy Ghost, too. Right. Amen. Amen. It's something about being full of the Holy Ghost. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, you're ready to go out. You're ready to win souls. You're ready to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Amen. Amen. You're ready to see sight come to those that are blind. You're ready to see the dead raised. You're ready to see the lame to walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You're ready to see blind, uh, 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 deaf ears be open. Amen. Right. Why? Because you're full of the Spirit of God. You're full of the Holy Ghost. And it's so important to stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you never know who you're going to run into. You never know who's going to call. And you never know what may happen or what may come your way. But if you're always full of the Holy Ghost, you know what to do when it comes your way. Somebody say amen. amen. I'll never forget years ago. I was full of the Holy Ghost. I was brand new in all this. I really didn't understand it. And I had one of my friends call me. And I wasn't ready for this, but he called me. And when he called me, he said, hey, Jody, he said, I wanted to call you first. He said, I'm about ready to commit suicide. I said, no, you're not. And he said, what, what do you mean? I said, no, you're not. He said, well, I, I, I've already decided. I said, yeah, but you're going to undecide. <laughs> and he, he said, what are you talking about? I said, I need you. We need you. Your family needs you. Your parents need you. Your siblings need you. The world needs you. Now, was I, was I praying? No. Was I reading the Word? No. 
And I'll tell you, be honest with you, I was in the restroom when he called me. I was. And so I got on that phone and so I, I wasn't prepared for that phone call. But guess what? I prayed with him at the end of that phone call before we got out. And guess what? He's still alive. He got married and he's got kids. Somebody say praise God. But what happens? You always have to be full. I said you always have to be full. Brother Hagin used to say that the Lord told him to minister out of the overflow. He said to minister out of the overflow. Turn to John 10.10. 10. I'll be just a minute. Is that alright? John 10.10. 10. We all know this verse, but I like to amplify it. This is the Amplified Classic. This is Brother Copeland, the one he promotes, and uh, I ordered it. John 10, 10. He said, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. He said, I came that they may have and enjoy life. Listen, and have it in abundance. And what is abundance? Listen to what it says. To the full Till it overflows. Hallelujah. What kind of life you having? In abundance to the full till it overflows. Double portion. I said double portion. Full abundance till it overflows. Everybody say, I have life. In abundance to full and overflow. Say, I have life. In abundance, to full, and to overflow. So the Lord gave me, uh, reminded me of this scripture, but it reminded me of the illustration that my grandmother, and she didn't really know what she was doing. She did, but she didn't. But the Lord took me back to an illustration of my grandmother. And this illustration is, my grandmother, every morning, I stay with my grandparents a lot. And because uh, my parents were divorced and my grandfather was a preacher and my grandmother worked second shift to 3 to 11. So I could stay over there in the summer and wake up at 9 a.m. when she did and she cooked breakfast for me every morning. Nice. Fried eggs, bacon, sausage, biscuits, and gravy. Shout somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I just know that's going to be in heaven. I know I'm going to have a brand new body, but I know they got to be some gravy. Up in heaven somewhere. Amen. Somebody just say amen. Hallelujah. So, y'all probably say lobster too. Whatever you want. Hallelujah. So my grandmother would do this. This is what she would do. The Lord reminded me of this just two weeks ago. My, my grandmother would take her coffee cup and she'd put it in a bowl. Just like this right here. And she'd fill her coffee cup almost all the way up with coffee. And then she'd go get the, uh, the uh, carnation milk in a can. Come on, somebody. I'm taking y'all way back here. Oh, yeah. Carnation milk with a can. And she'd take the can over and poke it on this side. Take the can over, uh, open her and poke it on this side. I said, why do you do that, Granny? And she said, because if you don't poke it on this side, it can't get air, so therefore it won't pour out. There you go. So, wow. Yeah. So, you got to have a way to come in and you got to have a way to get out. Yeah. So, she would fill her coffee cup up like that with coffee. And then she'd take that can of carnation milk and she'd start to pour it in and she'd take a spoon and start stirring it. And while she was stirring it, it was going into the bowl. It would go into the bowl. And she'd take the spoon out. Every single morning I saw her do this. And she grabbed this coffee cup and she'd tilt it just a little bit. And she'd scrape it and put it over there. And then she would grab the bowl when she wanted some coffee and drink out of the bowl. And the Holy Ghost reminded me of this illustration two weeks ago. And he said she was drinking out of the overflow. And so the Lord told me. To preach last weekend, I was going to preach to you tonight, I kind of am, just to abbreviate it, that we should be drinking out of the overflow. Yes. Because look, she's drinking out of the overflow, her cup's still full. Hallelujah. What David say in Psalm 23, my cup runneth over. Runneth over. Runneth over. Why? Because we're supposed to be so full that we're overflowing. 
And if we overflow, then we're affecting other people. But if we're not full, we're not even affecting ourselves. But if we're full, we're, accept, we're, 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 we're correcting ourselves and we're helping ourselves. But if we're overflowing now, we're getting into somebody else's property. And somebody else's life. Anybody with me? Can you say amen? amen. Now this is what nothing spiritual my granny did. She just did it every day. And somebody asked me, why did she do it? I have no idea. I'll ask her when I get to heaven. Amen. She's already there with my grandfather. Praise God. But she did it every morning. But the Lord told me that we should be ministering out of the overflow. That we should not empty our cup, but we should have a full cup to overflowing to minister out of the overflow. And then the Lord reminded me of what Brother Hagin said. That he say, so, so filled with the Word. He'd say, stay so filled with the Holy Ghost. So filled with prayer that he would go up. He, I remember Pastor Cowan and uh, uh, Pastor Phil Privet from Virginia. They told me one time they were with uh, Brother Hagin. And they were late getting to a meeting. And I don't know, it was 10 or 15 minutes late, something like that. And uh, they said, Brother Hagin, you need time to pray and study? And he looked right at them and he said, no, I'm ready. He said, I'll minister out of the overflow tonight. That's what he told them. He said, I'll minister out of the overflow tonight. He didn't need to go study and pray. He already studied and prayed before he ever got there. And so what would it be like if we already study and pray before the test comes? We already study and pray before the trial comes. We already study and pray before the devil tries to come and try to steal, kill, and destroy. What we do, turn around and minister to the devil out of the overflow. <laughs> you ain't stealing my cup and you ain't going to get my overflow because I'm going to minister out of the overflow but guess what? If my overflow gets empty, then I'm going to get some more from the cup and pour it into the bowl and I still have some left. Somebody say amen. amen. And so tonight I challenge you. My word and the word the Lord gave me is minister out of the overflow. Say so full that your cup that it overflows into your bowl. And you're ministering out of the overflow everywhere you go. You're ministering out of the overflow. You're ministering out of the overflow. Never get low. You can't minister out of the overflow low. Somebody say amen. amen. You can't minister out of the overflow low. So the times that your flesh does not want to pray is the time you need to pray. The times your flesh don't want to read the word is the time you need to read the word. Amen. Amen. I said, amen. Yes, amen. And so you got to stay full to overflow it. So Jesus comes to give you life, yes. abundance, full, yes. and overflow. Amen. So Jesus walked in this. Yes. Now watch this. We can look at Jesus' life. And Jesus ministered out of it. But guess what? He recognized when he was out. And he said, come on guys. I got to go to the mountain and pray. Because he realized he had, he had to get filled back up again right. to overflow. Right. Yes. Because he didn't have anything left. Right. But then when he come off the mountain from praying, guess what? He was full again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said praise the Lord. Amen. So I challenge you. Stay full of the Spirit to overflow it. Amen. Pray in the Spirit. Amen. Stay full of the Word to overflow it. Yes. I challenge you all the time. Amen. Amen. Seeking, asking, knocking, following the Spirit. Minister out of your overflow. Because if you do, it'll slosh on other people. Other people will notice. I said other people will notice. I had one guy tell me this. He looked right at me one morning. I had a cup of coffee. This guy looked at me. He said, why are you so happy in the mornings? And he kind of pointed at my cup. I said, no, 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 no. This is coffee. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is coffee. Yeah. Ain't nothing else in this. This is coffee. Yeah. I said, you know why I'm happy in the mornings? And he said, why? I said, because Jesus woke me up this morning and he's my Savior. He looked right at me. He goes, oh. He said, well, I'm saved too. And I said, well, why ain't you happy then? <laughs> I mean, Jesus makes me happy. Don't even think he can make him happy. Amen. Anybody with me? Amen. Amen. And so here's the thing. People should notice there's a difference 
in you. When, when, when. Not just when you're full, but when you're overflowing. They'll notice the difference about you. And they'll ask you, what's different about you? There's something different about you. Or they'll come to you because they know that you're a Christian. And they'll start to ask you to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. I remember one time. I, I need to hush. I, but let me just give you this. I remember one time before we got married. I come back from Bible college. My dad owned some dump trucks. And so I got my CDLs. And I started driving. And this was right before I started youth pastoring. First ministry job. And um, I was driving a dump truck, and we were at a quarry, and there was five dump trucks. And there's one guy, he was there, and he said, listen, he said, I know you're a minister. He, he, I guess they already told him, I didn't tell him. He said, I know you're a minister. He said, and you just have to go ahead and forgive me, because I cuss. He said, no, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I cuss. And I was like, okay, praise the Lord, you do you, and I do me. And so when we wasn't running, I'd go out in my dump truck and I'd pray and I'd read and I'd study, get ready to preach youth service. And it's where I went full time. And, uh, and so I'd pray for this gentleman. And then one time after uh, some time went by, one time he, he said, hey, can you get my dump truck with me? One day we, we was raining, we wasn't running. I said, sure. I got this dump truck with him. He said, hey, I want to ask you, can you pray for my family? Praise God. Yeah. Said, yeah. Praise yeah, I sure can. But you need. We're about to rebuke this devil right here. Hallelujah. And so uh, he told me. I prayed with him. He said, I appreciate that. And I said, yeah, not a problem. Didn't say nothing else. And then uh, some time went by. I went full time at the church. And then I heard he went to somebody's church. He got saved. Born again. Started living for God. He quit cussing. He quit drinking. He quit doing all the other stuff. Praise and God. now he's in heaven with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so Hallelujah. I'll see him one day. Amen. Amen. But what does it take? It just takes a little light. The old song, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. How are you going to shine it? Through the overflow. Being full of the Spirit. Being full of the Word. But watch this. Let me, let me, let me, let me make sure I get this. If you're full of the Spirit then you're full of the love of God. Because love is key. Love is what compels them, right, to salvation. Amen. It's the goodness of God that leads people. The Bible says the goodness of God that leads people, what? To repentance. What is the goodness? It's love. You just love on them anyway. They cuss you, I'm going to love you anyway. They lie on you, I'm going to love you anyway. Well, praise the Lord, amen. Because it's the love that they cannot understand. Why do we love? Because He first loved us. So being full of the Holy Ghost, you're full of love. And so they say, why are you so happy? First lady, why are you so happy? Why are you so loving? I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm not just full, but I'm overflowing. So stay full and overflow. Every day of your life, do the best you can. Turn the TV off. Is that all right? My wife said this a couple of uh, nights ago. Distractions. They steal your overflow and they steal your cup. Amen. So turn the TV off. Turn your phone off. It's okay. You ain't got that much of emergencies going on anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I got to leave it on so my kids can get in touch with me. Well, there's two parents. Cut one of them off. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. You know why you're laughing? Because you already thought about that. Amen. You already been there and done that. So what do you have to do? Limit the distractions. So you can stay full. You can take the time that you need spent with the Lord. My wife talked about Mar Martha the other night. She just wanted to spend time with Jesus. Can I tell you? Take time. Spend with Jesus. Amen. The Word of God. and Spend time staying full of the Holy Ghost. 
Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Well, I don't know what to do because what happened that I seen is going to happen has already happened. He didn't laugh and said, joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand on your feet tonight. Come here, sister. Come here. Yeah. I was supposed to pray for you last night. Well, I said it was, but the Holy Ghost didn't remind me. So I guess tonight's the night. You, my first victim. I mean, uh, sorry. Praise the Lord. So taka la mangeshi kiti ke ne mongo dang and te ki ki te. Kola ka 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 sa ka la. Oh, na 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 sata. You have not lost your way. You have not been in the way. For God. It's orchestrated everything, even today. So, forget about the past and let it go. The best days are ahead of you and not behind you. Sorrow and grief shall lead you today. Oh, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> Say day 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 ashata coming to you today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't just be full, but overflow. 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 Oh, and others will know <laughs> that greater is he that is in you. Yes, yes, yes. You know. You know. You know. Yes, you do. That he's greater. He's greater. He's greater. And he's doing it on the inside of you. Yeah, he's bringing you through to victory. He's overcoming. He's overcoming every obstacle that stands in your way. So don't doubt, but shout his name. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Oh, he's still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still the same. <laughs> oh, and He's filling you today. Oh, the Holy Ghost refreshing, renewing, refilling, refiring. Oh, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. glory, glory. Glory, glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Can you just lift your hands right now? Can you just lift your hands right now? I know my wife, I know pastors already spoken. Double portion anointing, but I really feel this. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Just say this with me. Say, thank you, Lord, for filling me with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Thank you, Lord, filling me with the Holy Ghost, afresh and anew. Lord, not just my cup running over, but Lord, that I'm overflowing. Father, I thank you that I'm overflowing, that my cup is full and I'm overflowing. With the Holy Ghost in power. Oh, today. Come on, say today. I'm filled with His Spirit. I'm overflowing with His Spirit. Signs and wonders shall come to me. I shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. I thank you, Lord, for using me. Every day. Thank you, Lord, for overflowing. Your spirit within me. Say, thank you, Lord. I'm walking in the overflow. I'm ministering now in the overflow. Thank you, the overflow is part of my life. Thank you that life more abundantly is part of my life. I'm not just full, but I'm overflowing. Hallelujah. Can you shout about it today? I'm overflowing with the spirit. I'm overflowing with joy unspeakable and full of glory in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm full of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Jesus, 
Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Whew. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Be filled and be refreshed. Be renewed with power from on high. Be ye being filled in the name of Jesus. Be 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 filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled to overflowing in the name of Jesus. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, healing flows. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, peace flows. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, provision flows. <laughs> Why? Because everything you need is in His presence. Everything you need is in Him. It comes by Him. It comes through Him. It comes with Him. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 Overflow. Overflow. Say overflow. Overflow. It's coming in abundance. <laughs> More than enough. More than enough. More than enough money. More than enough health. More than enough joy. More than enough peace. More than enough anointing. More than enough spirit. More than enough revelation. More than enough, God. More than enough, God. More than enough. I have more than enough. I'm overflowing. I'm slushing on other people. I'm slushing on other people. I have more than enough. Shake it, shake it, ba ba ba. Joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. The glory of the Lord is about, round about you. The glory of the Lord is in you. The glory of the Lord is going before you. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. 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 Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Somebody shout about it today. Hallelujah. I may receive that right now. Hallelujah. Full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. <sighs> man, oh man. Don't just be full, but overflow. Overflow everywhere you go. <laughs> Yes. Say that. Say, I'm going to overflow everywhere I go. Amen. Don't be apologetic for being full of joy. Don't be apologetic because you don't have no sickness on you. Come on. Amen. No sickness, no disease, no germ, no virus can take its place in your body because you've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. I'm the healed of the Lord. Healing virtue is mine. Hallelujah. I walk in divine health all the days of my life. I walk in divine health all the days of my life. I'm full to overflowing. I'm full to overflowing. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, somebody laugh about it. Ha, 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 ha. Somebody say, I don't feel like laughing. Just go ahead by faith and laugh anyhow. Amen. Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Full of joy and overflow. Full of joy and overflow. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> well, glory. Woo. I say glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Joy unspeakable Woo. and full of glory. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> glory. Yes. glory. I'm going to stay full. How about you? Amen. Yes. I'm going to overflow. How about you? Amen. Yes. My cup doesn't run over tonight already. Sheesh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. How many love your pastors? Amen. Come on. Yes. Can you give them a hand? We honor them. We bless them. We thank God for them. Most importantly, we honor the Lord. Come on. Father, we honor you tonight and we say thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've done. 
in all the services. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the healings. Thank you for the gifts and operation. Thank you for the manifestations. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the prophecy. Thank you for our pastor obeying the Lord and laying hands on us. Thank you for allowing us to be here. The privilege and the honor of preaching in Canada. Lord, that our life, our ministry, our family will never be the same in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that we are just beginning. And I just thank you. We ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor you tonight. We say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We love you and we honor you tonight. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's been good tonight, hasn't it? Yes. It's been wonderful. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're just so grateful. I'm just so thankful. Okay. Thank you, Lord. So, I need the both of you to step back up here again one more time, if you don't mind. Double. Thank you, Lord. Get this right over there. I'll get my wife to come to Thank you. So when you were down on the floor, uh, the Lord would, he just, he, we kept bringing to my remember something about angels. There's something about angels. And then Miss Kim, she had uh, wrote me a note and, and said, uh, uh, I heard in the spirit, upgrade in angels for this new level. Now, Brother Dale travels with angels, okay, and, and there's, there's angels coming to our services uh, uh, quite a little bit, and uh, uh, my son Greg, he, he traveled, there was usually at least six with, with him, okay, and I don't know if you're, you have to, there's a, a part of, uh, of um, discerning of spirits, you'd be more conscious of their presence, because it's, it's there, and uh, it says uh, in uh, Hebrews 1.14, 1, it says, are they not all ministering spirits set forth for the heirs of salvation? Right. The next verse, in chapter 2, verse 1, how shall we escape so great a salvation? It's not talking about Jesus, it's talking about the angels, because that, all that's all together. And so there's going to be an, an increase because you're going, you've gone into a new level tonight, okay? A new phase of your ministry. Remember Brother Hagen talked, I remember I was talking with Pastor Nelly here today. And uh, uh, he'd been in the ministry for like 11, 12 years and the Lord said, now you're about to enter into the first phase of your ministry. And he had four phases that he went through, I believe maybe five. And so you're entering into a new phase of your ministry. And so I want you to, uh, I, one of the things when, when I was praying for you, I was sitting there and the Lord said to me, he said that what he had for you, that he said that I have a portion of that for my wife tonight too. And I should have ministered to her right then when I was ministering to you, but I, I missed it, that slipped by. But I said, well, I'll, I'll do it nice so tonight. So I want you to step over there too, sweetheart. And we're just going to pray, okay? And you're going to help me. Because you got, you got some of that in you now, too. <laughs> All right? But. What would I like you to do? Do you want to receive what they, some of that what they received? Uh -huh. That's what it is. Okay? No, no they're going to they're pray with, with me. They're going to lay their hands on you. They're, the Lord said, and I'm just talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, uh, what they have, there's a portion of it. There's some that he has for you tonight. Okay, now what is it? I don't know. You'll figure it all out in time. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you have to receive it. Yeah. You have to receive it by hand. Brother Jody, would you stand on this yeah. side right there? Sure, sure, sure. We're just going to lay our hands on you, and it's going to come. We'll Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. 
Hallelujah. I believe she got it. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 All right. <laughs> we were so blessed to have uh, uh, Brother Jody and Sister Tamala come. Yeah, I just I just want to confirm. Uh, I, my wife doesn't even know this, but I just want to confirm what he just said, and that's what prophecy does. It confirms. But I told Brother Dale; he's the only one I've told. But sometimes I've been in revival. And I've been worshiping on the front row, and I feel like somebody's right here. And I'll turn around, and nobody's right there. And I've had it happen two or three times. And I called Brother Dale, and I was like, it feels like something's on me. Like, I, I thought it was bad. But he said, no, it's, he says, angels. And so it's happened two or three times. It didn't happen here, but it happened when I've been on the road by myself. And so I just want to say that because I want to bring confirmation to what you Amen. just said to us. Uh, Amen. And so I, 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 I long for that because it was it felt like a support system yeah. there when my yeah. wife wasn't there. Yes. And uh, it just really, yep. really was a blessing. Amen. 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 So you can become a, a much more sensitive. You know, uh, women are usually more sensitive to the things of the spirit, but uh, men can, can learn to be sensitive. Uh, to these things also. These things, these things are real. These are not things we, we make up uh, uh, or anything. It's just a part of what the Spirit of God has yeah. for us. You you also have angels that are with you. Yeah. And I'll just remind you very quickly what the Lord told me in a, in a prophecy that I gave, which was kind of a, a rebuke to, to, to me. And he said, for the last 15 years, I have sent my angels in here to do something, and they weren't able to do it. And I was conscious in my spirit. I knew that there were angels here, and I didn't do anything about it. And I said to the Lord, all right, what do you want me to do? He said, the next time you sense an angel, you speak to it, and you say, go forth, ministering spirits, and accomplish that which you've been sent forth to do. That the plan of heaven and the will of the Father would be accomplished. Yes, yes, yes. And so I began to do that because they would come into our services. And I would be conscious, I mean, just in my spirit, I'd be, I'd be conscious that there was an angel there. And so I learned, I started to wait yeah. until I knew he was there. Wow. Remember, uh, um, who was that? Uh, uh, William Branham. He would minister to the angel came. They're there, okay? And so uh, uh, when, when that happens, then the atmosphere, and when I speak to, to go forth, the, and I did it tonight, the atmosphere in here changes. Mm -hmm. Supernatural uh, things begin to happen. It's just, just like, a, like a, a transformation. Yes. And if you're sensitive, you'll pick up on some of those things. And I tell people, I said, if you sense an angel come in, you don't have to stand up and broadcast it to everybody. Just simply say, you know, ministering spirits, go forth. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to try to do an offering. I, I tried, I started a long time ago to try to do an offering. And so uh, uh, tonight, uh, why don't we do this? I know, like me, I, I have an offering for the church. I have an offering for Brother Jody. So let's just... Combine it all together. We'll just give them everything tonight. All right. Thank you for that one. All right. And that one hits. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're going to, we will do, is that okay with you? Yes. Amen. Okay. And so uh, I, I, you know, I had a, a check, you know, made up for the church, which was Wednesday night, but I just, uh, uh, it gets confusing because uh, we've done two offerings at the same time and then. And then they really struggle back in the back trying to figure out, well, which one's which? Because people aren't paying any attention when you tell them to mark it down for this person or that person. And they, they get confused. And so, anyway, were you blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. I mean, I, I, was, you know, I was blessed immensely. I was blessed immensely. Just, uh, you know, what an honor. Do you, do you, do you, I don't know if you understand what an honor it is for this congregation. Absolutely. To God, to God, 
for God to send somebody and for the congregation to miss. You see, if the congregation is not on board, these things aren't going to happen. That's right. That's right. They are not going to happen. Brother Hagen pastored three churches. He only had one he could get where the Spirit would move because the congregations wouldn't let him in the other two. Wow. And so when you get to a place that, that it's the congregation that is really what would allow so much of this to happen. Yes. But we have taught for, I've been here 26 years, we started on day one, we started talking about these things. Wow. Amen. Amen. And the ones that wanted to learn stayed, and the ones that didn't, they moved someplace else. Okay? Missed out, of course, but... All right, you need an envelope for your giving tonight at all? If not, we're going to, we're going to, we have Sister Falaki with us again tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Pastor Tony, would you come up and pray over this offering for us? Say something good about it. Amen. Amen. We appreciate it. I, we, I really love uh, Pastor Tony. He's such a blessing to us. We love Pastor Mike too. Amen. But he shows up to be like me. Uh, I told him that's what I wanted. I want to be like him. Why is that? Of course, it's you, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> that all being said, before I do this, okay, I felt the Lord wanted me to be up here anyway. That's why I was standing up in the back, hoping He'd call me out. But of course, God's faithful. I had a vision, just as He was praying for you earlier, for both of you earlier. And in the vision, I saw the water changed into wine, and it was the best wine. It was the best wine. So too. I saw the heavens open up. And I saw a river flowing in mm. to this place. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, people that are called by my name, they shall do great exploits. Amen. Amen. It's the anointing. It's the anointing. Amen. you got a hunger. you got a thirst. Yes. you got to come to that place of overflow. Yes. You want that anointing. Yes. you got to trust God. That anointing. If you desire, God says, whatsoever you desire, when you play, Believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. Amen. We need to have that flow, that, 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 uh, that overflow, so we can reach out to that lost world out there. I was going to share this, but I'm going to share this. On Tuesday, I ministered in St. John's, which is so powerful. Two halfway houses, good crowds, whatever have you. At the end, I prayed, and I'm not talking here about me. I laid hands one minute. Man, he went down so fast and so hard he started laughing. He started laughing. Brought up six people. Asked every one of them, you have it, or asked the people in the crowd, do you have any pain? And every one of them, you know, six of them came to the front, started laying hands on them. Man, each as they did, each one fell out of the power. And that being said, at the end, I asked each and every one, do you still have pain? No, 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 no. But i got to tell you, I'm not both myself. I was walking in the overflow. I was walking in the overflow. Same time. I was leaving the building. And there was a guy. And the Lord told me he was Mary Magdalene. Amen? What he was doing, he was bringing the people. He was bringing the people to me. And this was outside. There was a major highway on the side. And there was grass. As they were coming, I laid hands on them. As I laid hands on them, they fall under the power. Amen? That's the overflow. That's the overflow. You've got to read the word. You've got to pray in the spirit. Amen? You've got to trust God. Jesus said, the works that I do, you should do also. And greater works than you shall do. We walk by faith. We trust in God. Tonight I'm taking up the offering. You know, the offering's all about trust. Yeah. It's trusting God. Yes. And when you get it, it shall be given back to you. Yeah. Right? But it's already been given because where it's given to us by grace. Right. The unmere of the undeserved favor of God. All things that pertain to life and God has already given to us in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Oh, the devil will try to bring fear. He'll try to tell you, don't do it, don't give no more. You've given enough. Amen? That's when you give. That's when you get it. That's when you trust God. And that's when you do decree. That's when you declare, my God supplies all my needs. My God supplies all my needs. Don't let fear come in. Uh, he does the same to me. Don't give no more. Don't give no more. Don't give no more. You know what I do? I give more. <laughs> you know why? Because I know my God. And my God is a good, good God. Amen. So Father, we just thank you today. We come here to worship you, God. 
You are our substance. You are our source. As we give here tonight, Lord God, we give to you him there. So we give to you joyfully, Lord God. I do trust in you, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that all our needs are met. We want to praise you. We want to worship you. We want to just give you thanksgiving. We give you all the glory for all that you have done and all you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. Give it, it shall be given. In Jesus' name. <coughs> Well, I guess going to wrap that up. What am I wrapping up? A <laughs> present for me? <laughs> I, I love big presents, you all know that. That's it for tonight. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. It's wonderful. Just wonderful, really. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so you go. Maybe we can put a collar on them and keep them here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we'll keep them a hostage. You know? Don't let them out. Uh, Fridays. So, uh, prayer group, and it's at morning, right? 9.30. Morning, 9.30. Morning, 9.30. Y'all come out now. Amen. Y'all come out, and you have the service on Sunday morning. Amen. Travel in mercy, Tony. Pray for travel in mercy. Pray for traveling mercy. Pray for traveling mercy. Okay, yes, we all. Um, just, um, the Princess Margaret Bridge closes on Friday. Okay. To yeah, for the next two or three months. Okay, so anybody coming from from the uh, north, uh, south side, coming over here, on the Christmas market, it's going to be closed during this Friday. Yeah. It'll be closed for the next three months. We've got to take the diversion, come around in order to get here. Father, we just pray for this wonderful couple. We thank you, Lord God, as they travel back home, Lord God. We thank you. Your word said you'll never leave them. You'll never save them. That you're with them always, Lord God. That you sent us ministry with spirits, Lord God. To stand guard, to stand protection. Yes. So we just thank you, Lord God, for that protection yes. now. Yes, we thank you, Lord God, and we speak the blood of Jesus over them. Yes. We say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. And we say, as you travel, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. Amen. We thank you for that overflow that's flown yes. through this couple. Yes. But we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen